point at the person who's better in bed. And that's a wrap. <laughs> love Evolution presents Mix It Up, a show where we look at love, life, and race in the six. On our first episode, we meet Marie and Jan, a couple running a catering business in the city. I'm Marie, and... I'm Daniel. Um, we've been together for about 10 years. So we've got three kids. And we run a company together. We run a catering company. You know, there's people who are vegetarian, they're vegan, gluten-free, tons of different dietary restrictions. We want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable. So let's mix it up. Tell me about yourselves. <laughs> don't put me on the spot or anything. Um, we don't really cook together, so... No, <laughs> no. Yeah, usually, yeah. like, I cook or you or cook. I cook, yeah. yeah. So. And here we are. Yes, oh, we, have to, we have to play nice. <laughs> <laughs> Try at least, yeah. So this is actually our catering kitchen that you're currently in. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why we don't typically cook together is because Daniel is actually a professional chef, so I tend to do more of the day-to-day -day home cooking, and then you do sort of more of the professional stuff. I'm and usually in the back, and uh, Marie kind of organizes the client. So let's learn a little bit more about you two. So just give me a bit about yourselves and a few lines. What's your story? Where, you know, who are you? Oh, you look at me again. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so he uh, defines himself through you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but right. we've already started. We've already started. I like it. I like it. No pressure. Um, so yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm born in like Moncton, New Brunswick. And I moved to Ontario when I was six years old. Um, my dad's from Haiti and my mom's from Scotland. And I've been here for 20 years and so. And I love this city. I love how multicultural and diverse it is. I love how I feel comfortable in this city. And yeah. I'm a little bit more local. I uh, was born in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up there in Meadowville, like I guess the northern part. Uh, and then moved to uh, Toronto about 10 years ago. Um, you know, started a, you know, as a private chef. We have three children. Uh, we're also a blended family as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so it adds like a quite a, a unique uh, dynamic uh, to the, the household. For sure. And let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so tell me a little bit about differences. How does differences come up for you? <laughs> you know, there's some differences there. Keeps it spicy, you know, but... Uh, spicy? Yeah. <laughs> there's no spice. <laughs> there's no hey, spice. Hey. <laughs> So what are we cooking? So this is a it's an adaptation of a soup called soup jurimu, and it's a, a Haitian soup that we tend to eat on Independence Day, which is like January first. Cool. Um, although I didn't really grow up on a, in a particularly political family, so we actually eat it at Thanksgiving. So like a nice pumpkin squash type of base soup. And it has meaning for you as a family. It does, it does. Like, so, I mean, as I mentioned, it's um, an Independence Day soup. So the history behind it is that this was a soup that um, Haitians had to make for their masters mm. and they were banned from eating. And so when they gained their independence from France, um, this became the soup that they make every January 1st to sort of commemorate that. This is political. This is a political <laughs> soup. I love it. Yeah, so we've, you know, to just further the political part, we've uh, made it vegan and gluten-free and make it a little bit more accessible. Daniel's made some little adaptations to it and made it a little more Ontario friendly, but. Yeah, it's a little less orthodox, um, but I'm gonna go through the method for you. Yeah, tell us. Uh, so basically you're gonna be making uh, two different types of uh, broths, I would say. Uh, one's gonna be a puree and the other one's you're gonna be cooking uh, the whole vegetables and mix them in the end. Okay. So for the actual puree, you're gonna use uh, a Hubbard squash, which is right over here, uh, an onion, uh, garlic, ginger, plenty of ginger, uh, lime juice, a scotch bonnet pepper, uh, you gotta have a little bit of heat in there, uh, and uh, some coconut milk. And basically you boil that, puree it, and then in pot number two, you're gonna have uh, your vegetable stock. Uh, there's, like Marie said, uh, we added a little bit of um, Ontario products, so corn is in season. We're gonna add a little bit of corn and potatoes. Uh, we have cabbage and Ontario uh, carrots with tomatoes, and uh, we did some smoked beans. Just to add like a, a nice kind of like a meaty texture of smokiness to it. And then we're gonna be garnishing it with a fermented, um, lime fermented cabbage, which is pickles. And then uh, banana pizze, which Marie and I are gonna make. It's basically like a um, plantain chips. Plantain plantain. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a kind of a fresher version of the, the version that I grew up with. So we wouldn't use fresh tomatoes, we'd use like tomato paste from a can. A lot of Haitian food is really tangy and a lot of that mm. comes from like, there's no refrigeration. 
longer than a couple of hours because of rolling blackouts. So they tend to treat a lot of meats with vinegar and acid and things like that. So everything's kind of got that sort of flavor kick to it. And it's fermented, so it's good for your gut. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and the scotch bonnet is nice, but my mom was never a big fan of heat. Um, otherwise, it's, it's pretty much dead on. It's pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> Let's get into some more difficult questions. <laughs> so we were talking about differences, cultural differences. I'm curious, how does this come up in your household? How does this come up for you as a family? Go for it. <laughs> I think it, 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 it was one of those things where um, it's really difficult to explain to somebody who's never necessarily dealt with racism what microaggressions or what just being around general racism and bigotry can do to someone. And I think it took me some time to realize that like, I can't just shrug it off and it doesn't make me a strong person to just kind of be around it and not say anything. So this year's been a bit of a wake up call. We've always kind of, we've always kind of been in a, this relationship where we're kind of like free thinking, free speaking. Um, Just but, to back up, yeah. you guys have been together how long? Ten, almost 10 almost years. Almost 10 years. 10 years, so wow. Um, such a, like the elephant in the room, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that went unexpressed for almost explicitly. Oh, it didn't go unexpressed. Just even talking about difficult questions, right? I can feel like the heat just went up <laughs> in the kitchen just by asking the questions, just, right? Yeah. Share with me, how did, it, how did things get real? <laughs> for me, I would say that experience with racism has been kind of at the forefront uh like almost from the beginning of our relationship mm -hmm. um, with daniel's family almost since day one and that's been kind of tough for me i'm not crying it's just the onion okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the onion is always a safe excuse yeah yeah it's a bit challenging i think the first time i met his parents uh his dad said to me that it was his right as an American to be racist. Wow, on the first meeting. On the first meeting, so that kind of set the tone. I had just, I don't have that many dating partners, uh, and neither does Daniel, but we both married our high school sweethearts. And so uh, Daniel was the first serious relationship I had after. So I think there were a lot of expectations, like I didn't know when you meet the parents or things, but I met Daniel's parents super early. Yeah. Like, uncomfortably early. If I look at it back now, it's like, that was too early. But, um, yeah, because it was so early, it kind of didn't give us a chance to kind of develop our own speed. I think I met them in December and we started dating in October. So, for that sort of bomb to get dropped on somebody in terms of um, racism right in your face, that so was a little hard. Tell me how you managed. How did you navigate that? I Having somebody, like, tell you explicitly, right? Yeah, I think it was really hard, too, is, like, um, Daniel's family, they are genuinely nice people. I think in the beginning, that was the hard part. Um, like, in that meeting where I met Daniel's dad and, and his mom, like, they gave me a bouquet of flowers. Mm. So I never had someone's parents give me flowers, and then I've also never had someone's parents tell me it's the right to be racist. So it was very uh, difficult for me to figure out how to feel about it. Two different polarities. Yeah, and it, and it, and it kind of continued like that for the, the you know years afterwards, which was something would be said or something would come up that would be hurtful, but then they would go out of their way to do something really, really kind. So it always made it really difficult to kind of call it out or to be really angry about it. Uh, that being said, I mean, I did have a relationship with your dad where I basically did call him out. It was almost like this tit-for-tat antagonistic relationship where he kind of enjoyed it, like the banter. Um, and I, I did to some degree as well, but then it just got to the point where it was we're bantering about something that's me as a person as opposed to a topic that's just, let's talk about politics and let's talk about fashion or something like that. So that's your version. <laughs> <laughs> so Daniel, tell us your take or your version of, the, of your meeting. 